G'day guys, Coach Tom here. Today we're having a look at our three hacks. This is gonna be our hacks to pass any guard against anybody. So let's get started. First, if I've got Kane here, when I go to approach Kane in his guard, I always must approach him on my terms. So what we're going to use is a metaphor here. Hopefully we don't offend too many uh, religious folk, uh, but we are going to have a look at the evolutionary little uh, picture that we often see where we've got the chimpanzee over here and slowly turning sort of into the human, so to speak. Whether of course you believe in evolutionary theory or not is irrelevant. We just need to use this as a great metaphor so you get into the right body position. So what we're going to do is if we've got human on this side of the diagram here, and then we have the ape on this side, we're going to aim in the middle, okay? So what we're going to try to do is we don't want to be like a monkey. We don't want to be all the way like a homo sapien. We want to be in the middle, okay? So we're just getting our feet evolutionary wise. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our heels are off the ground. We're going to make sure our elbows are in, okay? And now I approach him. Now if my heels are off the ground, my weight is going to be on Kane. It doesn't matter if I'm a big guy or a small guy, my weight is going to be on him. But because my arms are kept to myself and because I'm leaning forward, his guards don't fall into place. I'm not approaching him like this where he can start doing Della Hebers and things like that. I'm approaching him like this. So heels off the ground, arms in with weight. This is very important. Even if you don't have the opportunity to pass from a standing position, you are still going to start your guard pass, get that weight position. So even if I was here from a knee slice uh, entry point, I'm still gonna get that posture and put my hands in and lean forward, okay? So ideally, I will approach heels off the ground like this with my weight, okay? But even if I'm closer, I'm still gonna do the same thing. Heels off and leaning in, okay, with my arms tight. That's hack number one. You are gonna find just that alone is gonna give you drastic results in improving your passing to come. Now we have a look at our actual pass. Now it's important here that we break down what exactly is a pass. So if I'm here with Kane and I'm in his guard, we know that most of the time I'll pass the side control. I can, of course, pass to his back, pass to front control, pass to knee ride, pass to mount, but 90% of the time, for most weight classes, I'll be passing to side control, okay? So, my pass means that I basically go to get, say, to side control or mount or whatever, that I go from here over to his upper body. So, we need to ask, well, where is the finish line? You would never start a running race without knowing where the finishing line was. So, fortunately in Jiu Jitsu, we have a very clear finishing line by looking down at his hips, and if it's in the gi, he's got a belt. And that's our finishing line. So we would never start a race without knowing the finishing line. You would never start a business without knowing the break-even point, and that is the point where we are aiming for. That's our finishing line, okay? Now, if it was no gi, like I'm wearing today, it would just be where my rash guard or shirt meets my shorts or pants, okay? Now, to find out where we get our break-even point, to use a business term, or in this scenario, find out when have I passed the guard, when am I in a position that I am now ready to pass, I want to get my waist beyond his waist. This is the second hack and something that will change your guard passing forever. I don't care what type of pass you want to do. Before you actually pass, I want you to close the distance. Most people, they start in a guard, they try to pass, and then they get rid of the legs and they close the distance. At a high level, he starts bringing his legs over again, and now you can't pass and he'll put you straight back into guard. So what we wanna do is we wanna cheat this process. We're gonna cheat this process by closing the gap first. So if I had a belt on today, I want to get my belt beyond his belt. That is the name of the game. So hack one is we approach like a Neanderthal, okay? Weight off of our heels, leaning into him, pressure him. He cannot feel like he can get a chance to get a guard off. Then I must bring my belt on top or beyond his. 
So let's have a look at doing that. So I've got a waistline today to represent my belt and Kane actually has a white belt on here. So as I pray, approach Kane's guard using pack one, I've got some weight and now I'm gonna get my belt beyond his belt, okay? So that would be going straight through. I could now do a knee slice pass and we're gonna see the exact same thing. I have my belt knot here of my pants today and I'm gonna get it over here. So I can go knee slice but I get my belt in line or beyond his. I can now look at even going underneath for a double under style pass. Once I'm here, forget gripping and passing yet, get your belts beyond his. Okay? This is going to up your pressure dramatically. All the best passes for the majority of weight classes have passed with a degree of pressure. You can even start looking at lighter weight competitors like Gui Mendes can say, well, they pass with a bit of speed. Yeah, only when they have to. If you go to their academy and roll with them, you'll find pressure passing is the name of their game. This is the same for all of the best passing greats in, greats in history, from people like Hodger Gracie to people like Adolfo Vieira and Higa Machado. They pass with pressure. Pressure is easy. It's not about muscle, it's about weight application. And weight application is free. So our first hack as we approach in that Neanderthal pose with our heels off the ground, our arms in, and we put our weight through them, ideally through their legs and or body, okay? But legs is ideal. We then strive to put our pressure on them by getting our belt beyond their belt. Finally, we're gonna now have to do hack three, which is gonna be untangling the mess that he's left in because of hack one and two. So, as I'm here, hack one, I approach and I put my pressure on. Hack two, I now get my waist beyond his, okay? So once my belt line here is beyond his, now I must untangle. So in this scenario, I've just ended up randomly here. Let's have a look how I could untangle and pass Kane's guard for our third and final hack that's gonna let you pass most, if not every guard that you train and roll against of someone your level. I could untangle this way, bring the foot round, and now I can consolidate my side control. I could also, from this position that we were just in, untangle this way by pushing through for a knee pass and untangling him this way. He might now put his feet in my hips, so I might approach. He's got his feet in my hips, so I crowd first, and now I can untangle with a leg drag and crush. Okay? I might crowd into him like this. He's putting his feet on me and he's stopping me. So I might untangle by going under and pressure passing after my belt has got beyond his belt. All right, so first hack, heels off the ground, elbows in, and I'm gonna put my weight through it. Once I've achieved this, this is gonna make him feel very uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, I have to get past the belt. So my work's gonna go straight there. Get my belt knot up to or beyond his belt knot, like this. Once I've got to here, I must now untangle whatever kind of guard he's got me in. Most of the time, because of the pressure, this guard won't be neat. Because if you did hack one, he can't get a good guard on you. And if you did hack two, whatever guard he got is gonna be thoroughly destroyed. So I could pummel under and pass. Let's look at a different example. So you can react organically, Kane. So I come up on my toes, pass, and now I gotta bring my belt up. So I gotta get that pressure, and now I'm gonna untangle by going for a knee slice pass. Okay, one more time. First step, Neanderthal posture. Come in, he starts defending, I bring my hips up, and now I'm a leg drag. And pass. All with effortless pressure. Hacks one to three always works. So there you have it guys. This has not been our longest video, 
but I can guarantee you that you are going to see an immediate and drastic improvement in your guard passing. Out of all the privates I do each and every week with students, this is the private that when I give it to them, okay, over an hour, they come back instantly the next day or the day after saying their guard passing has gone up two to three hundred percent. You are going to see the exact same results and when you do, I want you to leave a note in the comment section telling me how effective you found it because I guarantee that if you combine all three of these hacks into a simple process, you will feel like you have a master key for effortlessly passing any guard. Okay, so try it out. Let me know how you go. I know it's gonna work great. Thanks very much for your time, guys. I'm Craig Strong. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you loved it. For more videos, click here. And if you wanna to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. I'm Coach Tom, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.